Hey, what's going on guys? It's Alex here. Today, I'm going to go over a sort of simple little artsy program I came up with uh, that I implemented in C in Cairo. Not too much of a big video today, just something I wanted to put out because I have not worked on a video since like final started and now the semester is finally over. Oh, and in case you're all wondering, yes, I passed all my classes. Okay, so the story of this program begins a few weeks ago when CodeBullet put out that perfect snake AI video. Now in the spirit of Code Bullet, I think I should be more than just a floating head in the void, so I am going to go ahead and give myself a body. Alright, three, two, one. Huh, what do you know? Just like real life. Now, I already know what you're thinking. Oh, you're gonna build your own, you're gonna copy him, you're gonna build your own snake AI. Uh, no, I'm not. It's not quite as cool as that. I loved the art style of just watching the snake go around the entire screen and all that. So I decided, why don't I sort of do that? I make a snake that goes all the way around the screen, except it skips right to the very end. It doesn't have to play the entire game all the way through. It just needs to fill up the screen and look nice with that same art style. So I set out to do this from square run. All I know is I have two components for this program. One, I need to come up with a good, sort of like a path, essentially, like a Hamiltonian path like he was talking about, through the entire grid space. And two, I need to figure out a way to render it. Now, I noticed he had done it in the browser, and I wasn't entirely sure I wanted to do this in JavaScript, like pull out the old HTML5 canvas again. So I figured, what's the easiest, most efficient way to do this? Well, I did it in C. How do I usually render stuff in C? Well, with Cairo. If you've been watching my channel for a little while, you might remember Cairo in such classic videos as bouncy black balls in C, and well, that's it. That, that, that's the only other time I've used Cairo. But nonetheless, you know, the more you use it, the more you get good at it. So I decided to pick up Cairo again, and instead of targeting an actual window to doing animations in it this time, I'm just gonna be rendering it to a single PNG image. So every time you run this program in the command line, you'll get one image output with that cool little snake looking maze thing. Okay, so we got the rendering out of the way. Really, I sort of did this project backwards where I did that first, and then I figured I'd come up with the algorithm later because between you and me, I am maybe not the best at coming up with mathy algorithmic stuff always. If it's like basic numbers, like sure, I can come up with like a linear equation, but I'm not as good at weird puzzly algorithms and I really want to get better at it. So, you know, I do my thing. You can see it in the background here. I code up the little rendering engine. Uh, it's really not that bad. It's actually pretty simple how it works. I basically just decided, you know, we can define like a width and height in terms of cells for the entire grid. And then in rendering it, like I said before, there's a simple linear equation. Uh, you get like the cell size times the number of cells plus like the border size times the number of cells minus one. Cause you have like, you know, you have like five cells, you got like four borders in between them and all that. Super simple. Just do that in both directions, dimensions, whatever. And you've got your grid. So then the really fun part is when I can decide, okay, so once we know which direction a tile is going in, that's when we can actually fill in the corresponding border section with like the right color. And in this case, I decided to choose green. I kind of kept it similar to what, whatever colors Code Bullet used. Um, it, it doesn't, as long as it looks similar, like, you know, it's fine. Uh, so I did all that. And you know, I was able to draw out like very small, simple little shapes, which actually ended up looking pretty good. So. Here we go. We've taken care of the rendering. It's all done in C and Cairo. I'm super proud of it. Now was the time to move on to the algorithm. I needed something that given a N by M grid, it could figure out like how a snake could visit every single point in that grid, essentially. So having a little bit of like experience publishing research papers and all that, I decided, you know, I, like I'm a scientist. Sort of. Uh, why don't I just go around the internet, look for research. Um, so I, I look up like Hamiltonian pathfinder algorithms or whatever. Uh, I get to the first one. I'm like, ah, yes, science. You know, it, it's doing it's doing pretty well. It's doing its thing. 
Um, and then I'm like, oh, wait a minute. The algorithm I was looking at literally just says, you know, if you got like a rectangular grid, all you have to do is go all the way to the right and then go down and then go all the way to the left and then go down and then go all the way to the right. And then, you know, something like that. Um, the exact algorithm was you break up every node into like black and white uh, and then black can only go to white, white can only go to black. Really, once you've done that, you can easily get to every single point on the grid, basically. Maybe you can get it to be like non-trivial with that. But, you know, so I was I was like, you know what, let me not push this off until I can figure out an algorithm. So I decided just to fill out everything with a random direction and where to go. And after I did that, you know, it's not like one continuous snake. But the more I looked at it, the more I was like, oh, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, this actually looks pretty good. And that's pretty much where I've left off on the project uh, because it looks pretty cool. So I will not be worrying about it for too much longer. I might eventually come back to try and figure out like a cool looking, like a good algorithm. You know, I probably won't. Uh, so, oh well. But on the bright side, because I made it very like dynamic in the rendering section, I can actually make like the borders the border section much larger than the actual cells themselves. So here's a few different cool pictures, some pieces of art I was able to create with this program uh, flashing around the screen here. Okay, and that's all I have for this video today. If you enjoyed it, please consider giving the video a like, share, comment, subscribe, follow my social media, or click the notification bell so that way you stay updated whenever I post a new video. Uh, apart from that, I don't have too much else to say, so thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next week.